to review detailed content warning which contains spoilers oh no 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 playing Toki Toki Literature Club you agree yeah, yeah I agree I agree but anyway what is up people <clears throat> we are playing Doki Doki Literature Club and uh I'm about to hurt my own damn voice now I remember this game from years ago and I remember it being kind of fucked up. So, uh, <clears throat> also remember it only being on Steam. But, uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go into it and, uh, I'm gonna do some stupid fucking voices. I'm probably not gonna be able to hold them, but we will see. So let's start a new game. The starting song is great. We'll go simple, we'll just go with J. And, uh, yeah. Oh, God. Hey! I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air, 
just like she don't care. Like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. <laughs> that girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today. But it is kind of, it, kind, it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. Don't fucking run away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. <laughs> I overslept again. But I caught you this time. M maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. <sighs> you say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, Jay. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple of something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean, even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> this is why I don't have my fucking camera on, because I'm making all sorts of stupid faces making these voices. We cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Jay... Have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm really not interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Eh, th that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. D did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me, when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh, I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know? Uh, and I... I know you're happy now, but I'd die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. <laughs> you couldn't be your friend. <laughs> you trust me, right? Don't don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess. I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit. Even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. The school day is ordinary as ever, even though people are shooting themselves outside when it's a fucking holiday, those ungrateful bastards, and it's over before I know it. After I pick up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sari wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was just hacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I, I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. 
You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know... Know what? Well, th that you could come to my club. Sayori. Yeah? There's no way I'm going to your club. Uh, meanie? Sayori is vice president of the lecture uh, literature club. A lecture club. What the fuck? Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. <laughs> I'm glad, Xion. <laughs> Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. C -c come on, please! Why do you care so much, anyway? Well... I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything, and she's really buff, and if you don't come, she's going to beat my brain in. Uh, don't make me promise. Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead, or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out. I let out a long sigh. Uh, fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go! And thus today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of school I rarely visit. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here! I told you, don't call me a new member. Uh, I glance around the room. Oh, welcome to the literature club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori is always, always says nice things about you. Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, Jay. What a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. All words escape me for the situation in this situation. This club is full of incredibly hot girls. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. S sorry? Natsuki. Hmm. <laughs> The girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes her look like a first-year student. She is also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You, you can, can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sorry, Sayori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Uh, don't, don't, don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Uh, well, it's nice to meet both of you. Uh, and it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Jay. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talk, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so generally feels a little... Uh, you, you too, Monica. You come sit down. We, Jay, we made room for you at the table so you could sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I've made the cupcakes. I'll get them. Is that, is this, sorry, I got a little too excited. And uh, how about I make us some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. 
As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there is one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Oh! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. Uh, well, I'll, you know, just hurry and take one. Sari grabs the first one, then Monica, I follow. It's delicious! Sayori talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around on my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. <coughs> I can't help but notice her sneaky glances in my direction. Oh yeah, dude, I have voices planned for all these people. <laughs> is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. But why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't heard this somewhere before. Made them for you or anything. Uh, I thought you technically did. Sayori said... Well, maybe. But not for y you, you know. You dummy. Alright, alright. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before sitting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. Uh, you, you keep a whole- uh, Yo, you keep a whole tea set in the classroom? Fuck! I'm already fucking up the voices. Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? I... I guess. Eh, eh, eh. Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Oh, that, that's not... Insulting, Yuri looks away. I... Uh, I meant that, you know... I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime before me, but at least I enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, what made you consider the literature club? <laughs> Yuri sounds, uh, special. <laughs> um, I don't know who keeps a whole tea, cla a tea set in a classroom, man. I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sir Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay. Don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and public 
publicly at publicly and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. <laughs> Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. <laughs> Monica sounds like a trap. <laughs> Shit's fucking reading from a script. <laughs> Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention like literature. You have to work hard to convince people to that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! Oh, uh, we'll do our best. You know it! Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though, I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Jay, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga? I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. N not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that could change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad face. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, you see... Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on clearly passionate about her reading. She seemed so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. Here he be on those drugs! <laughs> but you know, I like lots of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually impress me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, I read horror book. I read a horror book once. I desperately grasped something I could relate to at the minimum level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? <clears throat> really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone so gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think, or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world. If only for a brief moment. Uh, I hate horror. 
Uh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right. You usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called Don't You Say It Out Loud! And give that back! Fine, fine. Ah, uh, your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is as cute as you are. Say, Sayori saddles. <laughs> Sayori saddles up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. Moniker and Eeyore, I mean, Yuri, have no enthusiasm. <laughs> That's what I was going for, Shion. I'm not cute. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Uh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I, I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? N no. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Uh, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to readers, exposing your vulnerabilities, and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Well, I wanted to read everyone's poems. <clears throat> well, we all sit in silence for a moment. Okay. I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um. Uh, yeah, let's do it! Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Jay? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. Uh, what's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sayori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um... I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But... I'm sorry, I thought... <laughs> Okay. You all... I am defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? Monica be... <laughs> be like recalculating, lol. I have expect her to start buffering. <laughs> Monica needs a reboot. She's gonna shut down. <laughs> That's it. If writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls... Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Yes! I'm so happy! Sayuri wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey! 
You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came here for the cupcakes, I would have been pissed. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Jay, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Hee <laughs> hee. Yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with a mediocre with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Yuri and Itsuki clean up their food. Hey Jay! Since, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That, that's right. Sayori and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. <laughs> what do you hate, Shion? Yay! <laughs> With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. Where's Moniker's Z button? <laughs> We're gonna need to find out later. <laughs> Why do you hate it, Shia? <laughs> the whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright. I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances. And I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Our first poem! <laughs> Here we go! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Oh, we'll go scars. Fear. Defeat family uh, disoriented secretive flee ooh rain cloud heartbeat tears tragedy wonderful childhood uh Graveyard, laugh, jump, death, imagination, summer, and we hurt. There we go. First poem done, even though that's not how you fucking write poems. Hi again, Jay. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Ha, ha, ha. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for coming, for keeping your promise, Jay. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. Sayari told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room? Sending every day with Siri, Eeyore, Bumsuki, and Weirdo. <laughs> uh, Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature. 
Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Jay always gives his best as long as he's having fun. He helps with the busy work without me even asking. Like cooking and cleaning my room. How dependable. Sorry, that's because your room is so messy. It's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Yeah, so, is, it, is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Jay can become good friends, too. Um... Uh, say Sayori. Hmm? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the world. A weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know? W what Sayori? <laughs> Sayori sounds like a granny. Uh, me? Um, not really. No, no, don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? No, never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal, but it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Sayori, uh, I'm sorry. Y Yuri, 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 I wasn't thinking. Why did I say Sayori? I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So, any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I don't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... Uh, how is this girl accidentally being so cute? As disgusting about her room. <laughs> she even picked out a book she thinks I like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you could read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone settled in, I expected Mana to kick, to kick some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was writing, waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. She sounds disappointed. <laughs> she sounds like she fucking missed her psych meds, dude. Her depression meds. Man. It looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down in the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me, but I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening on in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. Well, probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. 
but it's not like at that it's not like that at all you know we just need a way of showing that to everyone something that speaks to their creative minds hmm? that does solve the problem though it doesn't uh what do you mean even if we come up with the most fun thing ever nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature club so it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place you know and after they come we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds what's that Sari is taking this really seriously it's rare to hear her deliberately the, 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 the yeah whatever like this <clears throat> uh that's a good point monica at 70 <laughs> percent in that case do you in that case do you think food will do the trick well, what kind ah well i guess we could cupcakes aha uh -huh. good thinking natsuki would love to do that Oh, you're right. Mitsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative Tommy. Cupcakes it is, then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. Oh, dude, my throat. Jesus Christ. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual, unusual self. Well, whatever. Fuck it. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I ended up letting her get on my case about things. I can't keep- I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. <laughs> you bitch! No! <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. And... Fuck me, man. <clears throat> I opened my eyes to find Sayuri's face filling my vision. I nearly fell out of my chair to damn near. Eh, sorry! Wait! A actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. The does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know? You- you'll need to get used to it! Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though! Yeah, I- I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. He. It's what I do best! That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. Market materia! <laughs> You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh, not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. I knew it. Come on! I, at least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayuri, it's written all over you. Sorry about that. Eh. Sayuri glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? 
Oh, God. I don't know the fuck I've been there. You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Uh, I run my fingertips down the side of Sayuri's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's a there's to a toothpaste stain on your collar right here. I try to wipe off the stain with my fingers. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Hey, you meanie. Yes, it. <laughs> Dixie! <laughs> oh, God. You just decide to show up here when I'm doing stupid ass voices. Enjoy! <laughs> hey! And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Eh. That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Eh. This is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Uh, don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Uh, I, I guess... Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. Sigh. <laughs> Oh, that Dixie, do you, do you know anything about this? Do you know anything about Doki Doki? <laughs> if you ever, if you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. D d don't say that out loud. Okay, Dixie. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you look much better now, so, uh... Why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy. Ooh. It's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. I've seen a whole playthrough, but most people have a favorite character from the start. <laughs> um, if I had to pick any character, it would be uh, Yuri, because I like the purple hair. Phew! That's so much better. Sari puts her arms out and twirls around. So, if I keep it on button, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? That old. Oh, no. <laughs> you love it. And why are you saying it like, like it's a good thing? Because... If I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that, that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh. I, I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, j just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. 
Uh, I guess we really are better at taking care of each other. Uh, and we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so. So, so. so maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Oh, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Huh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Jay, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I fail to sound enthusiastic, but Sayuri still trots away to retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? I yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. It's not calling out. <laughs> Why? Sayori is... Sayori is, is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Oh, it's poem time. Uh, Antoine, who should we go with first? Who's going to kill my fucking throat first? Jesus. I'm glad I have something to drink next to me. Monica? Alright. I should start with Monica. Yesterday she seemed eager to read my poem, and I want her to know I'm putting in effort. Hi, Jay. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Uh, <laughs> Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It, it's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Ah ha ha ha. Don't worry, Jay. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. Uh, well, we may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> hmm. Well, that may be the case, but maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways. 
it ends up being more similar than you'd think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading it to it too much? Ha uh, ha ha. I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Sayori's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. You and you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. <laughs> she needs to be plugged in for the night. <laughs> I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own kinds of styles. But I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry. I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be a fucking robot. Uh, very good. Well, that's cause I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know. <laughs> I see. Well, let's read it then. <clears throat> <coughs> Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor. An angry boyfriend. I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No. I can't see. I reel. Blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late, my retinas already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep, stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out and he on the other side was looking in. Foreshadow, 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 rebooting. So what do you think? Hmm. It, it's very freeform. If that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Uh, 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 it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can really be powerful. 
<laughs> Have homemade your eyes water. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is, if you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark bottle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. <coughs> that fucking voice! Jesus Christ, what was I thinking? I'm sticking with it though. Who oh, should I show my poem to? Which one are we doing now? <laughs> Shion, you could do error 404. <laughs> Almost made Monica reboot with that question. <laughs> Yes. Oh, which one should we do now? Yuri? Buff Suki? Alright, Shion, I'm my XD, so we will go with Buff Suki. Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. I did just didn't evolve any emotions. Evoke. So basically, it's not cute enough for your taste. Do you want to get smacked? Uh, I'll pass. <sighs> well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. Yeah, I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because... Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all so sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't that the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make any message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like, I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. 
I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. And she sounds like she smokes a pack a day. <laughs> That's not a poem in my book. This is why we do hard drugs. <laughs> uh, we'll do Yuri next. Mm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um, oh, so sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Um, it's fine. Don't force yourself. I'm not. I just didn't take my meds today. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay? This is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Ah, uh, so it's that bad. No! Did I just raise my voice? Uh, uh, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine, I really didn't notice. What were you saying? R right, um... It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's like as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's saying it's bad! <laughs> of course that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing. Even a simple poem. Ah, oh, I just put a little moniker at the end of that. Jesus. <coughs> Fuck. <laughs> Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice. And learning by example, and trying new things. She had a thought. The fact that she's the smartest one in the club with that voice. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased though. And biased? How? Um, well... Never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. Yeah, it's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? To get this fucking shit over? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the ember glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight you have withstood the test of time. 
the last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, claim, breathing air of the present, but living in the past, the light flickers, I flicker back. I, I'm sorry, I, I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it looked, it took you a long time to read. It's because I'm stupid! Ah. Well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Huh? That's a relief. Also, I liked the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short? I usually like longer poems. Not at all. I'm really, I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest, since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Hmm? Actually, the story isn't about ghosts at all, Jay. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember uh, that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more Solomon putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. It's impressive. It's nothing really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it wouldn't be long before you pick up on these things too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Ugh. This voice. Oh my goodness. This is so good, Jay. Huh? I love it. I had no idea you were such a good writer. Sayori? You must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. B because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. Yuri's opinion was way more constructive than this. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh, well, I I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know. So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a Jay poem. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayuri hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayuri. <laughs> the best for last. <laughs> you feel... You honestly think that's the best voice? <laughs> I'm really happy just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Uh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Jay. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? 
to trying new things like this for other people. That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayuri. I'm not sure if Sayuri sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. And I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That, that, that will be my way of thanking you. Uh, Alright, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! Now, now you'll read my poem too, right? D don't worry, I I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me get out of bed. Making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away your rainy day? I look above. The sky is blue. That's a secret because I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. That <laughs> still wouldn't be her friend. Sayori, this is just a guess, but did you wait until this morning to write this? No! I, just, just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially the last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school? It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> it's been so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, Jay, uh yeah. Wow. <clears throat> but next time, don't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Oh, well, I, I guess I look forward to it. Whew. I, I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Atsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. Hey, yeah, I'm more stressed on the throat, I meant. <laughs> As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Uh, um... Did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Oh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feelings of giving up. How can that be cute? I... I know that. I just meant... the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh. You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um... 
Well, I, I do have a couple of suggestions. Huh. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Jay did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all... Excuse me? I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I didn't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. And Jay liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Ow! I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Huh? That's not what I... Uh... You, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Jay appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Ah, and how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Arr. Um, is everyone okay? <coughs> is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Jay started showing up. N -n Natsuki. Um, Natsuki, that's a little. N it doesn't involve you. <laughs> I don't like the fighting guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Jay? She... She's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have a... Uh, to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Jake. Wait. There's a reason why we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessary, limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Jay? Um... Well... How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing! <laughs> but whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So, of course, that's going to be help me say... Natsuki! Natsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead, I turn to Yuri. Y Yuri? But Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori! Uh huh? Yeah. Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? D J? Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. I, I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being. She would never. It's your immaturity that's made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why. Exactly why nobody likes... Stop! 
N Nitsuki, Yuri, you guys are my friends. I just, I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people, and I love them because of their differences. Uh, Nitsuki's poems, uh, they're amazing. Just because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? B because... Well... Also, Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they always were. Big and beautiful. Sayori? Sayori stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So, uh, so, uh, fuck. Oh god, here we go. I honestly would side with Eeyore because of the voice. <laughs> yes. So this is why Sayuri is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, it I might come off as a good leader and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing of me. Uh, uh, uh. Nah. It's not like I could blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess that just means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. So they just gonna ignore the fact she complimented her boobs while trying to stop a I guess so, dude. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I wouldn't hate to see her get or see her get hurt herself. Herself hurt. Jesus! A good reason! <laughs> not good with people, you don't say. <laughs> it's because she's not people. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to knot. Such a genuine person, real <laughs> how the fuck is she a genuine person? Really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Uh, well, I'd say it was worth it. That was all right. Well, mostly. Jay, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learned something from your friends, too. So, your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I didn't learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Jay! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Hee! Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Eh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Atsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, 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 no. Th th that's not... Uh, that's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. Y you, don't, you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I could see why they'd make good friends with you. 
Phew. You know, Jay, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone else is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... Yeah. Every day is going to be so much fun. Uh, it looks like Sayori still hasn't caught into the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? Jesus. <laughs> we'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayuri. I pat Sayuri on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to see to use Sayuri as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. Monica always leaves just last because she don't want them to see her battery charger. <laughs> Alright, let's pick up some words. Uh, blanket. Shelter. Uh, disaster. Oh, God. Um, dream. Oh, God. Entry. Climax. Jump. Anxiety. Oh, fuck. Headphones. Adamant. Happiness. Nibble. Uh, despise, melody, um, rain cloud, passion, captive, tragedy, um, milk, <laughs> print out. All right, we'll probably go for like another 30 minutes or so, and then uh, we'll call it quits. Depending, we'll, we'll see how we get into it. And how my fucking throat feels. Oh, let me take a drink before I have to start fucking doing these voices again. God damn. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past few couple of days. I just did shit randomly, dude. And I was saying it as I was uh, doing it. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Jay. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. And speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No, thanks. Uh, that, uh, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Uh, why, why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Sayori nervous, 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 nervously retrieves her coin purse. And she hurts your throat. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. And then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill into the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Yeah. I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to classroom. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Uh, Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. <laughs> Drugs. Her face is in her book as always. Uh, uh. 
I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Ari! Tell Jay to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can reasonably afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh... Did I just... I... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Uh -huh. I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's fun. It's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. Y you were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept a revolution. Retribution. That! Still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Hey! <laughs> uh, don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But! <laughs> you wouldn't. You wouldn't have come if I'm wearing for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayuri. <laughs> Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayuri in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Pwah! Kah! Ow! What was... Huh? Uh, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayuri glances around. Eh, is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution! Re -re -re Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> Natsuki! That's so nice of you! I'm so happy! Sari hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sari rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Oh, so good! Sari su suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. Ah, for my tongue. Yeah. You're going through a lot over there, over just one cooking. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cooking. Oh, yours looks so good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. Well, yours is chocolate. And why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sari gets <clears throat> out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and wraps her arms around her. Ah, oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. The cookie's still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. <laughs> Sari suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? Uh... Mouthful, Sayuri trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Ah. Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Uh... Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me! Yeah, I haven't heard either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. Well, I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She's probably just had something to do tonight. She's pretty popular after all. 
I seen her earlier today with a wire hanging out of her ass. I don't know what for, but her eyes were blinking. Uh, you don't think she... She has a... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry. I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Huh? <laughs> But Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, <laughs> never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Uh-huh. That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must have not heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh... I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica! That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay! Uh, that sounds so cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Jay. The piano is a cover up for her new program. <laughs> Monica is at 100% and still needs a reboot. You guys are fucked up. <laughs> Monica smiles sweetly. Ah. I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Uh, uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd love, really love, the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I chose to leave out Sayuri's mischievous es <laughs> escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayuri somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Jay! Jay! Sayuri suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Time to upgrade your Monica. She's so slow. Well, it, you know how the festival is coming up? Me and Monica were gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, I, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Only Ma- Okay, okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Ah, uh, are you going with Jay to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Ah, uh, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. He, he, okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper too, okay? Okay! Ready, Jay? Yep, let's go. Sayori and I exit the classroom. Oh, clubber. 
I follow behind as Sayuri hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayuri finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayuri. What exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica ha have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah, that sounds kind of dull. Jay, you're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems. It's about performing them. Like, you say the lines of the poem like, between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what end have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that! Sayori? How do I put this? Uh, I'm not sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. <laughs> you mean he? I'm working super hard on this, you know. Uh, I, 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 I know, I know. I just meant that it's a pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you're loving this, Daisy. <laughs> uh, I don't say that. It's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. I'm so excited. The festival is going to be so much fun. Sari spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, Jay, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission, huh? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sayori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. So going on... So going adventuring with Sayuri brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayuri heads straight to the closet and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Sayuri pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand too. They're kind of dirty though. Sayuri puts... Sorry. Oh. Sayori starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted, we still need to find... Wait! I'm looking for my favorite color! Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Uh, I dropped one by accident! Smack! Oh, smack! Well... Ha ha! Sayori bends over and smacks her forehead right into a shelf. She falls to the floor, and the crayons spill all over her lap. Ow, 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 ow. You okay? My forehead! Sayori clutches her forehead. Jeez, Sayori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the wrist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hand, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Sayori slowly 
releases her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. <laughs> Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find some ice. Find you some ice. Yay! Where would I even find ice around this time? I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Even wincing for the pain, Sayuri makes a silly joke. Uh, what do you say? I'll be right back, okay? Uh, okay. That's an odd position near the closet, <laughs> right? <laughs> I pat Sayuri on the shoulder and run into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter since it will be used as an ice pack rather than a drink. But I know Sayuri likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayuri. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop the crayons back into the box. At least they already... They were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sayuri, here. I hand Sayuri the bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Sayuri opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sayuri, what are you doing? It's for your head, idiot. Uh, sorry, I forgot. Uh, how hard did you hit your head? Sayuri places the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings. Just bear with it. It'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Che? This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Huh? What do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time. I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. I... I usually fall behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did, but sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get hurt myself. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump, and I would start crying really hard. Uh, and you would rush over as quick as you could, and you would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? And did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Jay? I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years. You're rushing to help me, even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. Don't, don't call me that. And I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. And I, I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right, Jay. I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? You just see my Twitter post? Well, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Nixie. Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll each end up for college or after that. 
So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises. But, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. Well, I'm so happy. Sari has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should get back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? She might overcharge herself or take over the world. Good luck with that. She's gonna try... She's gonna see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs and from Skynet. <clears throat> Sari hops to her feet. <sighs> she clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast. You're hurting yourself. Oh. Well... I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs to try to hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. Ah, you're back. Good timing. I was about ready to start with sharing our poems. Ah. <laughs> Sayori, your forehead. These sounds, I can't. <laughs> what, Dixie? <laughs> She's fine, don't worry about it. Uh, I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead in the shelf. Well, anyway, were you able to find everything we needed? Uh huh. I have it right here. Uh, Sayori frantically glances around herself. I, I forgot all the stuff. Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper too. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. It sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Jay. Ah, well, Sayori. I've had to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure! Yeah, that. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too! Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should grab. Uh, get, guess I should grab mine! <coughs> Wow. After making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Oh, God. All right. After this round of poems, we're going to call it quits for the stream. But who should we do first? I'm going to leave it up to you guys. The first one to say a name, that's who we're doing. Plus, I want to check something. Check. Voice hurts. Oh, my God. Almost became a robot. You want me to do Monica there? Poems. <laughs> Would you like to me to read poems, Dixie? <laughs> Yuri, okay. <coughs> Let's see what you've written for today. Well done, Jay. Your skills are improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Eh, it, it's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poems to feel perfect. <laughs> Patrick has never looked more like a babe. And I'll do Sayori next to you. 
You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. I'll write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your readers to see into your mind. It's a very intimate excuse. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have a... Well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for... For... Gently snap bow. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions into the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic provision conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imaginary an imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to on their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. Is that a poem to cry for help? So, I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourselves? Be because they're embarrassing. And people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything- Don't you have anything like that, Jay? Well, yeah, I guess I do. Well, I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. But... I might be ranting a little bit now. <laughs> they make fun of her because of her voice. <laughs> I'm 
but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Alright, who did we say is next? Sayori, right? Alright, we just my damn chair. Sorry about that. Alright, Sayori. Jay! <laughs> I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Uh, I'm not hiding anything. But, your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too. You, you can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so... <laughs> no way! Not even Natsuki? Well, I guess that Suki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Oh, God. <laughs> Stop thinking weird things, idiot. It just means that you're a really expressive person. I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting me, getting in my business all the time. Eh, I don't know if I understand. Ugh. You never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayuri? Pat Sayuri's head. Uh, hey! I'm not a kid, you know. <laughs> they need a room already. <laughs> all right. Are you sure about that? Mm, maybe. Sari starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, uh, Jay. Uh, will you give me your poem? I, I kind of want to keep it. Uh, why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. Uh, Sorry. You completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> uh, are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when you when we go home. Really? Snap. Ah. Uh, I broke my pencil. Sorry, hesitantly bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being inattentive to her surroundings, she bumps right into me. S -s sorry It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sari clutches the desk before her to support herself, knee shaking. I'm, I'm a little clumsy today. Let's <laughs> <laughs> sit down, Sayuri. Yeah. I grab Sari's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh! Sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. <laughs> oh, well, she's hitting for him hard. <laughs> Bottles! I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. All, all, little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. 
happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle, on a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle, a starlight to make amends. Every time my friend feels a certain way, down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done. I open up and uh, in comes my friends. And in they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle. By the time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, echo, echo inside my head. Holy crap. Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean... I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I, I've i been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. <laughs> Fire, right? <laughs> Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Oh, thanks. I feel like... Uh, I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit. Uh, writing is like magic. You gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Oh. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sari's always had a bad habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it. No, ma no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Alright, who's next? Natsuki or Monica? Whoever wants it, uh, wants to pick, go oh, fucking ahead. I need something to drink. Jesus. Oh, I really didn't think I'd be doing these voices this long. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I mean, I guess Monica's not as st strenuous as fucking Natsuki's. Hi again, Jay. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Uh, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote today? Sure, here you go. I gave my poem to Monica. Scanning, 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 scanning. All right. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori, like the other one that you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. <laughs> it's kind of an exaggerating 
yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm, I'm not shy, it's just... Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone, but Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then to just Monica, just Monica, just Monica. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no. It, <clears throat> it's nothing like that. I'm s just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. Pick me. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, all right. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, Piercing, red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop, violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sin, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Load me. Hmm. It's even more abstract than the last one, huh? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just a... Uh, kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like you're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling or a conversation with the reader. Foreshadowing, foreshadowing. So putting it to that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Foreshadowing, foreshadowing. You never know when you might change your mind or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? Ah, ah, ah. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Um. <clears throat> she needs to be fucking rebooted! <laughs> Ooh! That's okay!
<clears throat> well, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better either. Whew. Huh? Whew. What? Uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. H hey! What makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment. Ah, glad to see someone recognize my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh... Something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Uh, you think so? Yeah. Well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck uh, me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well... Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so, uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's, uh, dragging you around a uh, dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we each take care of each other in our own ways. There was a little William Shatner for y'all. <laughs> Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. <clears throat> you should save Sid. Damn, not, not hold it. Yo, she's not. That's Buff Suki. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wiggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spiders, and I'm gonna tell everyone. <clears throat> Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this power. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies, and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone who would agree that that subject of the poem is an arrogant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course! It's about how everyone thinks, my... That doesn't matter. It can be anything about. Well, I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Sometime, some, sometime, Jesus, something that you're afraid of, people, find out they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Uh, that's funny. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. 
She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar, similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about, other, about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, it's not like I would judge her or anything. Natsuki has troubles finding word. I, I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff, I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style was really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important. What do you hear, Shia? But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too. So look forward to it. Fucking voice do you think I was going for? <laughs> okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today. So if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. What's this about, the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we could put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. Uh, that's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing at the event. Ah, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. The pokey on Meowth. <laughs> Meowth Suki. Ha! <laughs> We're going to be performing. Performing? Uh, uh M Monica. Yes. We're going to have a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is... We're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems, too. Sayori's putting it on all of the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for everyone to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... <laughs> You didn't already start putting these posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It, it's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know? There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. Uh, I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, 
No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put in a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And for more people who perform, the better will be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun! That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. <laughs> Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get over with it. Over with, yeah. All right. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's... Sigh. I... I guess I don't really have a choice. Uh, that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, 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 no way! <laughs> no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to a specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. 
Yeah. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. Ah, ah, ah. Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. Oh, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each other. You can do it, Yuri! It, it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she so? Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happened when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she in insinuates with perfect timing. Enunciates, sorry. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her if she was bewildered even herself. Yuri got possessed by her poem. She probably fucking did. I... Uh, it's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we don't want to, we didn't want to applaud her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm up next then. Sarah hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How the hell did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. Uh, I see, I see. Okay, then. Sari begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her, her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think of much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives me a gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Sayori. <laughs> Even Jay liked it. I, I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Uh... I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I, I know what you mean. That, that's well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. 
It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. Eh. Then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more, poem. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Huh. Don't make me go before Jay. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Jay lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki? It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Bitches love my poems. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Uh, yeah, maybe. Alright, then. That just leaves you, Netsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. This poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're... Uh, you're presenting... Huh. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? Well, I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. Well, I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. Th that, that's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so. Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Maybe, huh, make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Ah, <sighs> yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. 
As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. No other words, she'll be on her charger before the festival. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. Oh, fuck. Uh, I can do this. Uh, I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayuri and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, I'm impressing Monica, and then I'll have to do my best. Ready? Hello. Oh, ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Look at you two! Always going home together like that! It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh... How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Jay. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayuri once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayuri is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayuri. Uh, sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something earlier. I, I, I like how we get to, I mean. Sari fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <sighs> Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Ah, uh, but, but she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez, I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Jay. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve, would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sorry, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. I'm sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Yeah, she definitely put me on the fucking spot. Huh? conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for a Sayuri to care so much about. <laughs> I would Yuri this has that sexy ear voice. <laughs> but I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and save. There we go. We're gonna go ahead and save and we're gonna come back to this. Um, I don't know. She, uh, she on, what do you want me to stream more? <laughs> but uh, it's actually fun getting into this again. I really liked this when I first played it years ago, but there is... I know the game is really fucked up, but I forgot a lot of it. And with all the new stuff that was they've added to the game, uh, we're going to get to see a lot of new things. So I'm kind of excited for that. And Doki Doki was like... Doki Doki was like a fucking obsession for me back when I first played it on PC. I fucking loved the game. But yeah, thank you. <laughs> Great stream. Your voice needs a rest. Yo, it does, dude. Those fucking voices. Eeyore, fucking Meowth. Whatever the fuck I'm doing for Sayori and Robo. The robot here. Yeah. 
This game is dark, and uh, I thought it was cool when I first played it. I knew nothing, dude. Nothing. I actually had a friend of mine be like, you need to play this, and you need to fucking... Yeah. And it, everything that happened just shocked the living shit out of me. So... It is a little weird playing this on the PlayStation 5, though. Uh, playing this with a controller is... It's definitely weird, but guys, thank you for hanging out and uh, listening to my dumbass voices. I'm going to call it quits on this stream, and we'll pick up uh, next time. So, uh, oh, bye-bye now. <laughs>